Hey, welcome to part two of Three Ways to Slice and Dice in Ableton. I'm Ryan from rm-sounds.com, and if you didn't watch the first part, I highly recommend you go check that out. But if you're not in the mood, basically what we did was we loaded up a funky drummer audio loop, and we chopped that to a new MIDI clip um, using Ableton's Slice to MIDI Track function. Um, and in this part, I'm going to show you a completely different way of doing it. So I'm going to start by deleting that MIDI track and activating our audio loop again. So the way I do it, uh, the second way I do it, is to put a new sampler on a MIDI track. Now if you don't have sampler, which is a premium instrument from Ableton, you can press stop here because this entire section is about sampler. But the technique does apply to other samplers if you have contact or whatever, so it might still be useful to you. But anyway, the, the reason I like doing it this way is um, more for a live performance situation. If you want to actually play in your breaks using a keyboard and um, you want to have, you know, there's different sounds um, to breaks. There's, there's your square pusher style, um, let the loop play kind of break. And then there's also, um, you know, turning a break into a bunch of one shots. Um, you know, like thinking in terms of a kick and a snare and a hi-hat and using those to program a pattern. But if you want to stay loop oriented where you press one note on your keyboard, take your finger off and it just keeps playing through the loop and then you press a different key and it's got a different starting point, um, then this is a great way to do it. So I'm just going to get started with it and hopefully it'll kind of explain itself uh, when I start playing it on the keyboard. But anyway, I'm going to drag my audio clip into the sampler, and then I'm going to deactivate this right now so I don't accidentally get two playing at the same time. And a couple of quick things I do at the very beginning, I'm going to go to the Filter Global tab, I'm going to turn my volume up to zero because I hate how it always defaults to negative 12, and I'm going to crank my release up to 60 seconds. I'm going to change my voices to one because I only want one copy of the loop playing at any time. And uh, I'm going to leave retrigger on. That is very important. I'm going to go back to the sample tab and I'm going to activate my loop again, loop forward mode, set to the entire audio loop that we've already cleaned up in the first part. And now, if uh, I play a note on my keyboard, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tap really quickly on middle C and I'm going to let go, but the loop is going to keep playing. Here we go. So it just keeps going. It is kind of fading out because of, you know, there is still a release time there. I wish it could be infinite, but what can you do? Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this zone tab. And what this does, uh, currently it's set to the key zone. And this allows you to set up multi-sample instruments. And so I can assign a different sample to, to a different key um, or key range. Uh, you can also do it for velocity, and there's also this chain selector thing. But we're just going to stick with key. Um, so I only want this loop as is to be triggered on one note on my keyboard, and that's C3. So I'm going to just grab the end of this green bar here, and I'm going to drag it all the way to C3 like this. I'm going to grab the right-hand side and drag it to C3 as well. And if you can, I don't know if you can see, but there is a little R in that box there. That stands for root. Now, in this technique, you always want to have the root on the same note that your key zone is assigned to. Um, and that is for transposition purposes. You always want to, you know, in this specific example, you want to have your uh, your loop on every key play at the same pitch because we want to keep it all the same other than our start points. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that uh, first zone there. And now it's done the exact same thing. If I were to play a C3, it would just be twice as loud. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the key zone to C sharp. Now you can see it's left that R there. The, the way you, you uh, drag your root around is to hit Alt. And you can grab that R. So make sure you always keep your R on your little green box there. So now if I select Auto, what this is going to do is going to just uh, display the current loop that's playing based on what key I play. 
I have two separate loops. They're both playing the exact same start point though. So what I want to do is on the second loop, I want to select maybe the snare as my start point. Just like that. So it's going to start on the snare when I play a C sharp. It's going to go all the way to the end and then circle back to the very beginning of the loop and then finally end on the snare and just keep going through that. So what this allows for me to do is when I play a C, I start on the kick and it just keeps playing through. When I play a C sharp, it starts on the snare. So already I've created or I've built a very performable break instrument. I'm a little rusty, but here's what it sounds like. So there you go. Um, very similar to the slice to MIDI, but again, has a different sound when you leave the loop on. So you could create as many as you want. I've done multi-sample instruments where I've, I've mapped out a different note to every single transient, um, but you can also pick just the obvious ones like kicks and snares and a couple hats or whatever. Here's another one um, on D. Maybe you want to go for this little ghost snare or something, whatever that is. So yeah, that's uh, really fun. I'm not a great performer, but that's what Quantize is for. Um, but you kind of get the idea. You just keep going through and assigning different key zones and make sure you always move your root. Um, and you can just select different start points and you can just jam out. It's lots of fun. And once you quantize it later, then, um, then you know, it's all a little bit cleaner sounding. But that is part two of three ways to slice and dice in Ableton.